Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in his eternal book, his final testament to humanity. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Allah says, Qul bi fadlillahi wa bi rahmatihi fa bi thalika fal yafrahu. Huwa khayrun min min ma yajma'un. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in his final testament, then say, to say, O Prophet, to the people, then say that by the, in the blessing of Allah, in the bounty of Allah, and in His mercy, then in that, let them rejoice. It is much better than all they amass. <clears throat> This bounty of Allah and this mercy. Ibn Abbas, according to one of the narrations, he said that the bounty of Allah is Islam. That this bounty is Islam. <coughs> and that the mercy is the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that in those two things, in your Islam, and in Allah's mercy, what is Allah's mercy? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is Allah's mercy. In that, then rejoice. It is much better than every single thing that they amass. It's better than your money. It's better than your house. It's better than all your cars. It's better than your degrees. It's better than your spouses and your children and your parents. It is better than all of the titles, it's better than all of your achievements, it's better than all of your pleasures and your feelings. It's better than every single thing. That is our Islam and our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has commanded us to have joy when we thank Allah for these things. So we celebrate out of what? Out of this happiness. That if it was not for Rasulullah, what would we be doing? Where would we be? Think about this very carefully. If you weren't here tonight, if you didn't have Iman in your heart, if our ancestors were not guided, if our people were not Muslim because of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what would we be doing? What would we be worshipping? How would we be spending the times of our lives? We wouldn't know anything about Allah. We wouldn't know anything about Rasulullah. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when this, when joy of this mercy is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us to celebrate, some people will say, well, it's not far to do this. That why was it kept in such a way in our scriptures that it didn't say line by line that celebrate the mawlid of the Prophet sallallahu celebrate the life of the Prophet sallallahu It's true, we'll tell them. This is not wajib. This is not wajib to do to come and gather here today like this and to sing these songs. You know why? Because celebrating the birth of the Prophet ﷺ, Allah made that something that comes from your own volition, your own choice, something that is far, something that is wajib. You have to do it. Right? You get reward for doing and you get punished for leaving. That's the, that's the definition of something that is far and wajib with the celebration of the birth of the Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and our thanks you only get reward you only feel that mercy because no one our prophet sallallahu alaihi didn't force us to celebrate his birthday subhanallah that's what the dictators and the kings of this world do the birthday of the king the birthday of the dictator rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam didn't have to tell anybody to thank allah for the fact that he was born in fact it's the lovers it's the lovers of Rasulullah who take this upon themselves. No one needs to tell them that. No one needs to make it. No one even needs to make it a holiday. No one needs to even call it a name. And yet the lovers of Rasulullah وسلم, are electric and buzzing with joy at the coming of Ahmed sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is why. This is why even the children know this. Even the purest of hearts know this. Our children over here. That's why when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Long before the, the, the idea of Mawlid, long before the idea of gathering together and singing, long before anybody had composed a couplet in praise of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa among the ulama, 
the Prophet ﷺ was walking into Medina. And as he was coming into Medina for the very first time, and the Ansar laid eyes for the first time on their beloved Prophet, whom they believed in at a distance because they heard the revelation that was sent to him. They, as the Rasul ﷺ was greeted by men ready to protect him, bearing arms who had come out to see him at the edge of the city, crowds of people who were jubilant and welcoming him inside, people trying to grab the reins of his camel, each one eager and avid that Rasulullah ﷺ comes and stays inside their home, comes and stays inside their neighborhood. As he was passing, amidst the celebration and amidst the happiness, the joy of Rasulullah ﷺ being seen for the first time with your bare eyes and coming inside your city for the first time, that he passed by a bunch, a group of girls who are playing with their duff. These girls whom perhaps they were not the big men and women of the Sahaba and the Prophet ﷺ heard them on a corner, these soft angelic voices of these young girls who were saying, نَحْنُ جُوَارٍ مِنْ بَنِي نَجَّارٍ يَا حَبَّذَا مُحَمَّدْ مِنْ جَارٍ That we are the little girls of Banu Najjar. Oh, how amazing it is to have Muhammad as a neighbor. Oh, how amazing it is that Muhammad is our neighbor, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, despite all of the big chiefs who were trying to lead him from the Aus and the Khazraj, despite all of the people who were welcoming him, despite all of the important people from the Muhajirin and the Ansar that were there, he still, he turned towards those girls and he stopped and he said, Do you love me? And they said, Ay Wallah, Ya Rasulullah, we love you. And he said, Allahu ya'lamu inni la uhibbukunna. He says, Allah knows that I indeed love you. In another narration, he said, Allah knows I love you. Allah knows I love you. Allah knows I love you. Because when you love Rasulullah one time, he loves you back three times. When you say a simple song for him, when these pure hearts even say a simple song for him, he appreciates that. He stops everything he's doing to listen to us. He stops all of the things in the ummah and all of the affairs of the ummah to listen to his lover, singing a little bit of his praises and thanking Allah for bringing the Prophet into our lives. And this is why when Anas anhu said, he said that the day that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam entered Medina, it became illuminated. Imagine the Rasul enters and it's like the lights in the city have gone on. It's like a sun rises and doesn't set. It's like light permeates every single thing in that city. And when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, when he left this world, he said, a darkness fell over all of Medina. Like a darkness fell over all of Medina. But the ulama say, that the blessing of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not go away. In fact, as his pure body, as his blessed body, touched the soil of Medina, the blessings permeated not only into Medina, but throughout the entire world. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's blessing is here, and it abides, and we each feel it here all the way from that blessed place. And this is why, what we have to ask ourselves, subhanAllah, that if this if this, if the coming of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa physical body is what illuminated all of Medina, illuminated all of Medina, then what of the heart in which the love of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa comes and takes up residence, comes and becomes the place of rest for the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa and his remembrance? What kind of illumination is that inside the heart? And that is an illumination that doesn't go. Because some people will say, and they will, this is the kind of questions that you get around this time. Well, you know the Prophet ﷺ was born on Rabi al-Awwal, but he also left this world on Rabi al-Awwal. So why don't you mark that? Why don't you mark that? Allah commanded us to rejoice. Allah commanded us to rejoice. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he brought Rasulullah ﷺ into this world, he also took him out from this world. But when he brought Rasulullah ﷺ into our lives, he will not leave our hearts, whether in the dunya or the akhirah. And this is why we mark the coming of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa because he never left. He never really left. For someone who loves him, he's always here. He will always be here. We're waiting to meet him. We're waiting to see him. And this is why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa at the end, towards the end of his life, in his final illness, 
It is said, subhanAllah, it is said in the, in the Muslim Adarimi. Guys, listen up to this. Hey, cute boy. Sweetheart. Hey, listen up. Hey, you come. You come here. You come. Come on. Come sit with me. You come. You sit here. Good. Come. Come sit. Come sit. Come. Come. You're special today. Come. What's your name? Abdullah. My name is Abdullah too. You want, you, want to, you want to come sit down over here? It's a special spot. Okay, you stay here. Okay? Good. So, when the Prophet ﷺ, he was in his final illness, Abu Bakr anhu, he led 17 prayers on behalf of Rasulullah ﷺ. Towards the end, the Prophet ﷺ, he put the curtain back. He pulled the curtain back. There are different narrations. And when he saw, when he saw Abu Bakr anhu leading them in prayer, he thanked Allah. Aisha says that he praised Allah for the fact that he saw his ummah in a state in which he could leave them. The Prophet ﷺ was meant to come into this world and he was meant to also leave this world. But the Prophet ﷺ did not leave until he was satisfied that he had left us upon something that we could continue on. Until he was confident that this ummah was on the path of guidance that he brought us. That the Prophet ﷺ, this is when he said, and he said in this, he said something very, very profound. Something very profound. That as he's staring through the curtain in his final illness, he says, Ayyuma ahadun minan nasi, o minan mu'minin, usiba bi musibatin, falyataz bi musibati hibi, anil musibati lati tusibuhu bi ghayri, fa inna ahadan min ummati lan yusabu bi musibati hi, ba'di ashaddu alayhi min musibati. The Prophet ﷺ said, Any single person from humanity, any of the believers, others say, anyone who is struck by a calamity, he's telling them this, remember this, anyone of you or any believer who's struck by a calamity, then let them find their strength in going through that problem in their lives by the thought, by thinking of the, of the calamity that you went through and you lost me. Because when you think of a greater pain, when you have pain in this life, when you have problems in this life, and people go through a lot of problems, but when you think that the worst has already passed, that Rasulullah has already left this world. He says, think of that time that I left this world and gain your strength by thinking of that time. Because there will be no other calamity that is worse and harder and more intense on someone than the loss they felt when I left this world. Allahu Akbar. And, and, by corollary, by, you know, in, in Usul we have this idea of an understanding and opposite. When, you, when the Prophet ﷺ says something, not only is he saying that the, that the calamity of losing me is the greatest calamity, but it's also saying that the blessing of having me is the best blessing you can have. It's the best blessing you can have. And this is why the Prophet ﷺ, why did he tell us about the calamity? Just out of mercy. Because when you're going through problems, he's still giving you a way to hold on. He's still giving you a way to hold on to strength. And that's when we have the hard times. But for every other time, for every other time, it is thinking about the fact that he came to this world. Thinking about the fact that he graced this world and our lives. And he is always here. This is why, subhanAllah, subhanAllah, even a little bit of a celebration of the Prophet ﷺ brings so much blessing. Even celebrating his birth by accident. Even celebrating his birth when you don't even know what it's going to give you. Even someone who is a kafir celebrating the birth. Even his enemy who celebrates his birth is someone who is promised something very great with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In Sahih al-Bukhari, as we know, subhanAllah, it is mentioned of Abu Lahab. Abu Lahab was who? He was the own uncle of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but one of his greatest enemies. One of the people who opposed him to the point where when the Prophet ﷺ came out with his message, Abu Lahab, whose, whose two sons were betrothed to the two daughters of Rasulullah ﷺ, the pure daughters of Rasulullah, out of enmity, he made his sons divorce the two daughters of Rasulullah ﷺ and sent them back. That was just the first act of enmity. Imagine your two daughters being sent back, being married to their cousins and being sent back home because your call to Allah did not please somebody. SubhanAllah. That's a pain, the first First pain in the heart of a father. First of the pains that the Rasul went through for our sake.
And Abu Lahab opposed the Prophet wasallam in every single way he could to the point where even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had destined this. And he brought down a condemnation for Abu Lahab. He brought down a condemnation that even these little children, they recite in the Quran, in Surah Lahab. And that at the same time, it is said in a hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari, narrated by Urwa ibn Zubayr, who was the, the nephew of Aisha, anha, that Urwa ibn Zubayr, he mentions that Abu Lahab was seen in a dream after the passing of the Prophet ﷺ. He was seen by one of the family members of Ahl Bayt. The commentators say that it was Abbas, anhu, the uncle of Rasulullah ﷺ. And he saw, Abbas, it is said that he saw his own brother Abu Lahab in a dream. And he asked, what's happening with you? And Abu Lahab indicated that he's in a very bad state. That he is in a very difficult state in the hellfire. He said, but I am given a bit of water to drink. Why? Because of the joy that he expressed the day that the Prophet ﷺ was born. Years and years before the revelation was to come and the prophethood was commissioned. That at that time, when Abu Lahab's brother, <coughs> Abdullah, Sayyid Abdullah, when he had passed away and his widow Amina was giving birth and she was going through the times of birth and the news came, the news came of the birth of a child. Zawayba, the slave, the slave girl of Abu Lahab came running to him with the news and said that your brother, your deceased brother, his wife has given birth to a boy named Muhammad And Abu Lahab, in the tradition of the Arabs, when someone brings you a good piece of news, he said to her, go, for you are free. And that's why it is said, as the commentators say, that this <coughs> he is given on Monday, some, according to some narrations, that little sip of water because of the joy that he didn't even realize, but that act of celebrating the birth of the Prophet wasallam. <coughs> and this is why, as one poet said, إِذَا كَانَ إِذَا كَانَ هَذَا كَافِرٌ جَاءَ ذَمُّهُ وَتَبَّتْ يَدَاهُ فِي الْجَحِيمِ مُخَلَّدًا أَتَى أَنَّهُ فِي يَوْمِ الْإِثْنَيْنِ دَائِمًا يُخَفَّفُ عَنْهُ لِلسُّرُورِ بِأَحْمَدًا فَمَا الظَّنُّ بِالْعَبْدِ الَّذِي كَانَ عُمْرُهُ بِأَحْمَدًا مَسْرُورًا وَمَاتَ مُوَحِّدًا the part that he, that, And I'm just going to put a translation, a poetic translation into this. If this is Abu Lahab, on whom condemnation came, and his two hands perished in the eternal flame, yet he gets a sip of water every Monday, it is said, for the joy he felt when he heard about the birth of Ahmed. Then what of that believer who his whole life did lead in joy for the birth of Ahmed, then died on Tawheed? If that's what Abu Lahab, who is condemned in the Quran, was seen in a dream as getting, and Imam al-Bukhari would not mention this if he did not think it was significant. Imam al-Bukhari does not just put things in his Sahih like that. And neither does Abbas anhu see dreams like that. Neither does Urwa ibn Zubair, one of the fuqaha of Medina, talk about things like this until, unless they believed that this was the truth. And if this is what Abu Lahab got in that situation, then what of those people who love Rasulullah What of those people who spend their entire lives thanking Allah for his coming, that gather together for, to, to thank Allah for the birth of the Prophet and then die with La ilaha illallah on their lips and in their hearts. And this is why the Prophet ﷺ, now you may be thinking, you may be thinking that, oh my, subhanAllah, that those people, like the Sahaba, they love the Prophet ﷺ so much. They love him so much that maybe I won't be able to show that kind of love for Rasulullah ﷺ. In fact, our not being there at his time was a mercy. It was a mercy to us. Some of the Tabi'een were gathered with one of the Sahaba. It is mentioned in Al-Adab Al-Mufrad, in Imam Al-Khari that they were gathered around and they said, Oh, you Sahabi of Rasulullah, how lucky you are to live in the time of Rasulullah. Would that we could be also in the time of Rasulullah. He said, don't say that. He got angry. Do not say that. Because you don't know if you were there in the time of Rasulullah and you had to face your own father and son on the battlefield, what side you would have taken. But rather thank Allah that you were given that Iman, that love for Rasulullah in, in a way that you didn't have to go through that test. And this is why the Prophet ﷺ, he gave that assurance. In case we 
lose our esteem, we lose our confidence that look, we're so far away, 1444 years away from the, the hijrah of the Prophet ﷺ, what kind of lovers are we? The Prophet ﷺ was speaking to us when he said, مِنْ أَشَدِّ أُمَّتِي لِي حُبًّا نَاسٌ يَكُونُونَ بَعْدِي يَوَدُّ أَحَدُهُمْ لَوْ رَآنِي بِأَهْلِهِ وَمَالِهِ Allahu Akbar. He said, the Prophet ﷺ said in Sahih Muslim, he said, the, the, there are people from among the people in my ummah who are most intense in their love for me are people who will be coming after me. Any one of them would love and would long that if they could see me just once, they would trade their family and their wealth. And Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani says, and this is the true test of love from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that if somehow you were given the choice in your heart and an angel came and said, would you want to see Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? If you could say in a heartbeat that I'd give all my family and all my wealth and every single thing that is to my name to see one look at Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then this is the muhabba al kamila The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in case you think, in case you think that being back in those times, we're missing something, remember this. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and I'll close with this. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sitting with his companions one day. Sitting with his companions one day, but his mind wasn't on his companions. His mind wasn't on the affairs of the ummah at that time. His mind was thinking into the future. His mind was going eons ahead, eons ahead, to think about those who had not been born yet. The Prophet ﷺ said, وَدِدْتُ أَنِّي لَقِيتُ إِخْوَانِي He said, I wish that I could see my brothers. I wish I could meet my brothers and sisters. And the Sahaba said, فَقَالَ أَصْحَابُ النَّبِيِّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهُ أَلَيْسَ نَحْنُ إِخْوَانُكَ Ya Rasulullah, aren't we your brothers? He said, Qal antum ashabi. He said, you guys are my friends. You're my companions. Lakin ikhwani alladheena amanu bi wa lam yarawni. He said, but my brothers and my sisters are those who believed in me, but they never saw me. And this is us. This is all of us over here. Has anyone here seen Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? None of us. And yet the Prophet ﷺ is longing to meet you. In fact, always remember something. When we go through these trials in our life, the Prophet ﷺ was dying to meet us even before we were born. Even before we had a chance to come on this earth, or even before our ancestors and our ancestors came on this earth, the Prophet ﷺ was already thinking about meeting us. And what he told to the companions was not to tell the companions. You think it was to tell them? No, it was so they could pass it on so they could pass it on to others, so they could come to us, so he could tell us, and we could know in our life, whatever we go through, that he is dying to meet us. In fact, he did die in order to meet us. He did. He had to leave this world in order to meet us. That's why he told the companions, مَوْعِدُكُمْ الْحَوْدِ Your appointment time with me and you is going to be in the Haut. This is not the place where we're going to meet. It's going to be somewhere ahead, in a station with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is why when Anas said, رَضِي اللَّهُ تَعَالَ عَنْهُ O oh, Rasulullah, on the day of judgment, all of mankind will be running around confused and scared and distraught. Everyone will be going, where will I find you, Ya Rasulullah? Where will I see you? He says, first place you should see me is look on the Sirat, on the bridge over Hellfire. If you don't see me there, if you don't see me there, then look for me at the Mizan and the scales. And if you don't see me there, then look for me, then wait for me, then look for me at the hold, at the watering pool. He says, because those are three places on the day of Qiyamah, I will not miss being at those places. So rest assured, as much as we love him, he loves us three times more, many times more. As much as we long for him, he's been longing for us way before we even existed in this world. And as much as we are going through our things, that the Prophet ﷺ is going through it even more. Azizun alayhi ma'anittum. It is difficult to bear the things that you go through, the things that you suffer with. It is difficult for him to bear. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Harisun alaykum extremely eager and avid for you with the believers extremely loving and extremely compassionate so may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those who long to be our beloved Rasul وسلم, who will drink at the hod and the fountain of the Prophet وسلم, who will be among those people that the Prophet وسلم, will love to meet will smile and who, for whom the Prophet وسلم, smiles wherever he is now when he has brought news of our actions by the angels. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sallam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.